everyone, this is another Transformers view, and this is the uh, War for Cybertron Sieged Voyager class Soundwave from Wave 2. Yes, Soundwave. And he comes, of course, in this box, which has pretty much the same box as always. Um, purple and all that stuff, Soundwave. WFC-S25. Really nice artwork. And got the little black light thing, which is a little bonus. You can't really see it too well, but there is a bonus showing who kind of is a uh, secret mode. There's, of course, Decepticon, words... Same picture as always, and his two modes rendered on the back, along with him, Battlemaster, and hey, look, he's compatible with certain MicroMasters, which I already reviewed. He also comes with instructions, which are pretty simple. You know, he's got a Concussion Blaster, a Sonic Cannon, and a Blitz Charge Blaster. Huh. Yeah, um, there's that. He is a uh, spaceship of some sort. Not sure what kind of spaceship, but um, some sort of very squared off spaceship thing. This is a spaceship which is like not really well liked because a lot of people are just like, it doesn't look like anything. I feel like it looks mostly like a um, very utilitarian cargo hauler of sorts. It doesn't need to worry about aerodynamics. It's just be holding, you know, flying stuff through space, you know? So it just boxed off. I mean, granted, these also look like missile pods of sorts, but... Yeah, it just, it doesn't need to look, you know, nice. It's, it's you know, utilitarian. It does what it needs to do, and that's it. It doesn't even care about looking good at all. So also, you can see a lot of scratched up, you know, silvery battle damage stuff all over this guy. Also on that, too, you can see his uh, chest right chilling on back there. And, you know, you got the vents and stuff. It, it I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's like, if you're into a certain aesthetic, then you might find this pleasing. But otherwise, I'm liking a lot majority of people are really not going to like this thing. I, I, I can understand, and I can understand why it's like it's one of those. Um, it's very. It only caters to very specific kind of tastes, I think. And uh, yeah, a lot of people are just going to be kind of put off by it. But I don't mind it so much. I think it looks actually kind of all right. I just kind of wish there was something here, kind of covering up these legs a little better. Other than the, other than that, though, I think it's a pretty all right. I think it, it just kind of makes me think of an '80s movie, you know, '80s sci-fi movie, and this is just you know hauling cargo through space slowly, lumbering. But yeah, other than that, though, it's not too bad. You know, just the net good old dark blue and silver and some gray. Yeah, transformation, though, if you want to do that. First, you want to pick, pull this gray thing off, which uh, I'll get to that in a little bit, too. Uh, pull these brown bits off these vent things. One of them goes in much tougher than the other. And that's the first step is pulling stuff off. Second thing is you want to take it down here. You want to start splitting this stuff apart. Kind of fold it out to the side here and uh, fold these pieces up right here. Now fold these those pieces up and kind of leave those out to the side for now. Um, beyond that, you want to... Right here, you want to kind of split things right, right there. You want to split that right at that point and uh, use this double hinge and fold this stuff forward. So that, you know, comes forward like that. We're actually doing a particular transformation first. Which is, trying to remember the exacts on this one. You want to tip, lift this up, um, fold these down like that. I believe you bring these up and clip them in place. So you want to move that down and then clip that into place. And then... Bring those forward, and then you, let's see, yeah, you move, you um, rotate these back, you rotate the elbows in a specific spot, the lower hinge on the elbows, so that there's these slots here, I don't know if you see that, but these slots there that tab into this right here, if you line it up properly. Actually, I think you're supposed to move these gray things down as well. I don't think that one part, it's one of those, the thing, but yeah, you move that. Tab those in. So did I mention we're doing the uh, secret mode first? Yeah, then you take these panels and undo them, move them down, split these apart, rotate them around like this, open up these panels, fold the feet down, collapse this up, Close that up, 
Open this up. Get the feet out. Open, close that up. Close it in. Like so. And then you just do that. And that is, well, more or less his um, hidden mode that they did. It's the little hidden mode that they put up. Apparently, you're also supposed to move these up. There we go. Those things are supposed to be moved up too. That's what I missed. Okay. Because the thing is, it's all not only in the black light. It's not mentioned anywhere in the instructions, but it's also it's the black light in the box. And if you open up the bottom panel, it's uh printed right there. So it is kind of officially endorsed just in a very, I guess, little secret bonus for the fans, you know, because this is very much his kind of G1 tower mode from uh, the first episode. It's a little goofy. It doesn't really look like anything except a kind of a standing robot, but hey. Um, there you go. If you want, you know, it's kind of cool they put it in. They, they put engineering in. I mean, specifically put tabs and stuff here for this mode, but, you know, it's not nothing really hugely out of the way it's not super complicated and doesn't it's you know but it's just kind of a little nice little homage to the first episode g1 but you continue on to robot mode you just straighten that back out you uh, untap the arms and move them down uh rotate that back up rotate the arms around move this out down and around and rotate this up take this backpack thing right here take the whole panel and move it out and you know, so you can also move this thing you know there's a whole this whole thing right here we can often move down with it you want to pull the head out, which can be a bit of a pain in the butt sometimes. Move the head out. And then when you're folding this back up, there's a double hinge here, which is really tough. It doesn't like to move. And then you move it down the other way so this becomes his backpack. And then you take the fists and fold them around like that. Rotate them out. And that is his well, basic mode right there, his basic uh, robot mode. Not entirely complete, obviously, but that's his robot mode because we also got to take his little shoulder cannon and uh, pick it in right there. There you go. That's his robot mode. Yeah, it's a uh, it's Soundwave. I really like this robot mode a lot, honestly. Um, the yeah, I, I can see why the alt mode can really uh, chase away a lot of people because yeah, it's it's a very much a uh, very, I guess, niche aesthetic that the alt mode is. But it, I guess some people are going to like, including myself, which, you know, the weirdos, like myself, who like it. But yeah, uh, the other thing is to put a lot of people off is just the sheer amount of battle damage right here on the chest, which for a lot of people is going to be annoying because it's going to be kind of difficult to pull off. There's a bit of more battle damage down here as well, but again, I'm one of those people who don't mind the battle damage so much. He also has those little pegs for, like, the gun blasts and whatnot on his arms, and he's got the six you know, ports on each side of his body to uh you know ports attached stuff to yeah this is his robot mode and i really like it. you know even got the little you know faux buttons on this crotch and everything i think possibly another thing people won't like is you know the uh big old gap right there in his arms like that's gonna upset some people but again i've kind of just kind of made peace with the fact that just some transformers are gonna have those gaps even though i do i do um uh admire the fact that they did you know because of these fill in really nicely so that you can't even see the hollow, you know, the spaces for the leg, feet. He also technically, this is technically a gun right here. This little gray thing is a gun, which again, effect parts. If I can find one. Effect parts can peg over the bottom part right there. And this is one is a gun too. What you do with this is you. Click, send it out till it clicks, and I believe this also can, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, one works too. They can hold that, so you can have, you know, three guns. Ooh, three guns. The thing about this thing is, um, it's real weird. Whittle, a little weird. You can uh, fold this out, and then you take these two things right here. And the weird thing is you take this one, you put it in the large end like that. And then you take this one and put it in the this end right here. And you got this ridiculous looking long rifle, which is a really narrow end. And it's like, it doesn't look great, honestly. Um, 
honestly, it looks pretty bad, so I don't like to use it, like, ever. Like, ever, ever. It looks bad to me. So I just don't use it. But yeah, fold up, though. Fold up like this, it doesn't... It looks doesn't look too bad as a gun, honestly. Doesn't look too bad as an alternate gun for him to hold, so... Yeah. It's not a complete waste, but it's just kind of a what? That's a weird thing to do, but whatever. Um, articulation, though. He's got a ball-jointed head, so left and right, up and down, lots of waggle. He's also got uh, light piping, which I believe you can see. Yeah, you can see that. It's really good light piping. Yellow. It's yellow, so it's like the toy, not the show. Um, change that how you wish. Forward and back on the shoulders, outward as well. Got a bicep swivel. Uh, he's got nice dual hinged uh, elbows right there. He's got a waist, which is pretty much unhindered. Uh, forward on the legs and the waist skirt out to get out of the way for those. Uh, back goes pretty far as well. Not all the way back because of the peg back here, but pretty far back. Outward goes way outward, which is nice. Got a thigh swivel. Knees are about 90 degrees. He actually, they actually move forward a tight, tiny bit too as well. His feet can tilt about that far. It's really not a whole lot of tilt, but it's there. And they kind of can wiggle a little. That's not a whole lot of movement, but I guess it technically counts. It's mostly just excess. It's not really intended to be articulation, I think, but it's there, I guess, if you want it. So that's something. Another thing is, um, I, I want to know, this little thing that sticks out on this gun can kind of bump into the backpack a bit. So it's a little frustrating because if you want this, you know, pointing straight outward like that, doesn't look great. Like, or not look great, but it can interfere a bit. Yeah, it's honestly, I just, I like how he looks in robot mode. It's really a good sound wave in robot mode. It's just for a lot of people, that alt mode and the battle damage are really going to put them off that uh, a figure that they otherwise might have picked up. But I guess, yeah, um, if you are going to have it just in robot mode all the time, this is, you know, you might be more inclined to buy it. Or if you just like, if you're like me and you actually don't mind the, robot, the alt mode so much, then, or even in, outright like it, then there you go. And of course, he is compatible with a certain MicroMaster spy team. And one of the cool things is you know, he's got the, you know, tape slot here. And well, you can see, if you can tell, um, his fists are molded differently. You know, one's got a finger out, which he's got the button here, which he can actually, if you maneuver the arm right, you can actually press the button You can actually press the button here and open up the tape bay, which when it's in robot mode actually stops. But if you try to open that up in the alt mode, it will open all the way, like flip out 180. And hey, look, the spy team, they slot in there just fine. They slot in there just fine. And there, the only thing is I've noticed particularly with Ravage, when you press the button with Ravage in, it sometimes will, uh, Get a little stuck. Yeah, Ravage doesn't always like to pop out nicely. I don't know why. More times, than, more often than not, it doesn't want to pop out, and I can't figure out what the problem is with Ravage. Laserbeak is a little better behaved, um, I feel, but I'm not putting Laserbeak in there because there's another thing which is cool, which is on the arms here, you can see these, these little um, indentations, four indentations here on the arm. Laserbeak here. Has little uh, spots on on his feet on the feet, which, if you want, it's not a super tight grip, but they kind of laser beak does kind of latch over those spots on uh, Soundwave's arms. You can see it kind of pops back up a bit, but it is a bit of a natural resting spot for laser beak. So. Uh, there's that. You can have a uh, sound wave pose with laser beak and laser beak, unless you start, you know, jostling stuff like crazy will not move that much. It's not like with the Titans return version, which will just, you know, you're just kind of balancing on there. 
So that's a nice little touch that they put in there. They didn't have to do it, but they didn't. It's also on this arm as well, so you can do it either arm. And yeah, Soundwave just looks really good, honestly, in robot mode. Um, the alt mode, I personally like the alt mode, but I know I know a majority of fans simply do not like it. And I can understand that. It's That's an aesthetic thing, and I understand that I'm kind of in a particular aesthetic that a lot of people simply aren't into. But if you, A, aren't really going to transform it that much, or B, don't mind or actually enjoy the alt mode, definitely, this is a great sound wave. I really like this one. You, the people have figured out a way to kind of finagle it into a um, boombox mode of sorts, or cassette mode, or cassette player mode, or whatever you want to call it, but um, one of the methods involves actually popping parts off, and the other method is kind of does weird things that, you know, putting stuff at weird angles, which don't really make sense, but hey... Um, there you go. Um, it, it is possible to get into a pseudo tape deck mode of sorts if you really, really want that. But otherwise, I think this is actually a really good looking uh, sound wave. I just really like this one, honestly. Uh, objectively, I think so far the best Voyager we've had so far is Optimus, but this is a really good one that kind of, um, I really like it. Just, I just really, probably just because I really like sound wave as well. It's just something about it, particularly when you got the, you know, tape, you know, tapes and whatnot. It just looks really good, I think in this mode so yeah i like it I like him a lot so that's it for my rambling uh hope you found this informative very entertaining i hope you like comment subscribe and i should see you next time with another video review